So good afternoon everyone. My name is Sushen and I represent Locus Energy in India. Uh, the topic of this session is data analytics and emerging technologies and I will be speaking about how uh, the data, the immense data that you're getting from your solar sites can be simplified, channelized and used uh, in order to maximize the returns, in order to maximize the ROI from your solar investments. Uh, before that, just a little quick introduction. Uh, Locus Energy happens to be one of the largest uh, independent monitoring providers in the world. We monitor more than five and a half gigawatt that is spread across uh, more than 150,000 sites. Um, we entered in the India market very recently, about a year ago, and since then we've been uh, taking care of the international projects, uh, everything outside of the US from India. So. The agenda for the uh, talk today is going to be very simple. Um, I'm going to lead you through what the uh, different kinds of data that you collect from the site and how, uh, what to look for in the data exactly, um, how we can bring it, how we can break it down, sift through the data, and then focus on the areas where uh, we can get maxim maximum returns, and then solutioning, how we can make the solutions very simple. Um, the scale of the industry. This is not something you don't know. In fact, you people are the ones who are making this possible. Uh, the solar in India has been growing at a tremendous rate. But the question that keeps coming up is that how, how do we make sense of the data that is coming in from these sites? How do we make sense of uh, how well these sites are performing? Uh, what are the types of analytics uh, that can help us uh, perform better ONM? And are there certain parts of the ONM process that can be automated? So uh, from the perspective of moving from a data analysis to a data intelligence uh, point of view, uh, Locus has been exploring or rather has uh, attempted to address the questions uh, from two dimensions. The first is how do we enable the ONM personnel to focus their time on where the issues are? So uh, whether it is through automated alerts, whether it is through the analytics, we want we don't want you to be just uh, struggling with the data. We want you to be able to know what or where the issues are and then spend time on them. Um, the second aspect is what tools and approaches that can be created that can efficiently help figure the problems out. Uh, so for example, uh, what are the different review, what, how can you review potential issues and uh, dig in for the root cause analysis? Um, what do we look for in the data? The first thing is uh, the loss. The uh, loss that from any PV site is again notional. Uh, it depends on how accurately we are modeling what the possible performance could have been. So one of the th first things, one of the basic fundamentals that become very important is how do we model what the perfect or rather the maximum generation from a solar plant could have been. And this accurate modeling is something that, that needs to be addressed, that needs to be uh, taken care of when we're building our own models. And uh, the second thing is that, okay, now that we know of what the losses are occurring, or rather what the total loss is, how do we isolate issues? How do we identify that what are the causes of all these losses? Um, this comes from uh, the perspective where uh, the objective of every ONM personnel uh, is different. Right? It depends on what the size of the site is. It depends on where the geographical location of the sites is. It depends on the design. It also depends on uh, uh, the general ONM approach that the organization may adopt. Uh, simply, uh, simply put, for smaller scale sites, uh, shading may not be a terribly actionable uh, uh, issue because nobody will put in special efforts to go and uh, address a lot of, uh, you know, soiling, soil, sorry, soiling issues is not something that will be terribly actionable because nobody is going to uh, spend any extra effort into, uh, say, a lot of uh, distributed solar sites. Whereas shading, uh, in case of shading, uh, if it's something that's built into the design already, it will be something uh, that you can ignore. But if it's not, and if it's it's a, a problem that you're just facing on the site, then it's something that you need to look into. So how does analytics help us? What Locus has come up with is uh, called the Locus VI waterfall, which is basically an automated analysis. Uh, how do we enable software to do the first cut analysis of the data that is coming in from your sites and help you uh, focus your attention on where the issues are. So uh, we have uh, classified the losses into seven broad areas. One is the cl clipping, snow losses, downtime. These are uh, relatively the easier ones to identify. And going beyond them, the partial downtime, which we call the uh, the uh, system, the step function, step function loss, uh, loss, uh, system loss in capacity. Uh, the soiling and shading and degradation, and then any other loss that we cannot fingerprint exactly goes into the last bracket. 
So um, in terms of uh, how do we identify these losses, uh, soiling and shading happen to be the most, uh, uh, you know, the acute ones that uh, create a problem ident in while identifying using software. Uh, the other losses, for example, snow losses or uh, partial downtime or downtime are relatively easily identifiable and uh, uh, can be automated very easily. But when it comes to shading, uh, once you have an idea of how your uh, sun movements, the solar movement is, and how the uh, array is positioned, and uh, once you've uh, cleansed the data and then stripped down all other effects, you can get a good aspect, or you can get a good uh, idea of where the shading objects are located at any site. And uh, where is that unfortunately located tree that is creating a problem or uh, resulting in a lower production? So, um, and that after that, it comes to the soiling bit. Uh, soiling can also, if you're doing an end to end analysis where you're uh, comparing all the losses that are occurring at the plant, you can uh, basically bring down, uh, cut off all the other losses, do data cleansing, and then get to a point where uh, you can come to, come to say that, okay, over a period of time, uh, uh, and when you overlay that data with rainfall data and cleansing, cleaning data, uh, you can come to uh, uh, data that can point out to where the soiling losses or how much soiling losses are occurring, what is the quantum of the losses, and uh, how quickly you need to uh, do away with them. So, um, over a period of time, the broad basing of losses uh, creates a baseline estimate of, uh, and it gives you a wide variety, a wide opportunity to look into different kinds of losses that are occurring at any site. So the first thing that it helps you do is to focus your investigation or focus your time on where the issues are, uh, like I said earlier. The second part is it helps you segregate the addressable issues from those that are non-addressable. So uh, shading may probably be a non-addressable issue or may not be uh, uh, an issue that you can immediately rectify. Soiling uh, is something that is uh, rectifiable. Uh, inverter, uh, problems with the inverter are something that will need a corrective action immediately. Um, then we get to the third one, which is basically you can incorporate quantified seasonal or regional uh, effects into your uh, O&M plans. So uh, if there's any particular area, we were talking about Rajasthan and how there's a lot of uh, soiling that happens there. Uh, your o &M plan would probably uh, incorporate uh, basis the readings or the losses that you get from your sites there. It can incorporate how your o &M approach should be for those or the o &M, uh, plan should be for those sites. Then the next aspect is how, we, how do we look for meaningful trends in the results. Um, looking overall at the plant's performance, just one singular individual plant's performance, uh, you may not be able to get or arrive to train. Um, to end, I will just like to uh, give a thought out. Um, yeah, you can all read already what's there on screen. But the fact is that uh, at such conferences as this today, we tend to extol the, the uh, opportunity of using technology, the latest technology, and uh, how it is going to, how machines are going to take over and how everything is going to be replaced. Uh, but the key element is that as of today, uh, machines can help you do the calculations faster. But the final decision making still rests and it still requires a human element. Uh, so focusing your energies is still something that we uh, or you will have to decide. Uh, we can only help you do it faster. Thank you.